Welcome back to Daybreak at the Standard. I'm Michael Cohen. And coming up, we have the pros right here with me from Beach Tennis. And you're probably thinking, what is Beach Tennis? Well, it's tennis on the beach, but it's played a little bit differently. That's right. It's, it is tennis on the beach. Beach tennis basically takes the best elements of volleyball and tennis and fuses them together. The main difference that people see is that you're playing on the sand, you can't let the ball hit the ground, and you're playing in an environment that's way more crazy and way more cool than regular tennis. So what about your feet, like, like you know, you're running around the sand, not dangerous, no? Uh, no, not really dangerous, <laughs> but you know, the great thing you do, you can go head first in the sand, you might eat a lot of dirt, which is something you don't do <laughs> with the racket. And so these are the pros, Team Rhino. Right, tell, me, tell me about the name. Right, it's just kind of, it's kind of our little team name. Um, you know, Rhino is big, strong, don't let anything get in the way. So uh, we just kind of... So tell me about that. your backgrounds. Uh, we actually grew up together uh, right outside of D.C. And uh, our backgrounds are originally in tennis. We both played uh, junior tennis and uh, collegiate tennis. And then uh, we both tried to play professional tennis as well. And uh, it didn't quite work out the way we wanted to. And uh, that's how we slowly accumulated. You look like Andy Rocks a little. <laughs> 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 so let me tell you, what are the three, tell me, what are the three biggest differences for you when you first started playing beach tennis than regular tennis? Well, definitely playing in the sand is the biggest change, not uh, on the hard courts. Um, then just the environment around, and then just having fun, not as much pressure. It's just uh -huh. definitely a, a more fun atmosphere. And what about your swing, backhand, forehand? Tell me about that. Most of it's just volleys, so it's all out of the air. You're not really taking uh, ground strokes. Um, but it's, you know, you can hit overheads just the same as tennis. Mm -hmm. um, but since the net is five feet, ten inches high, you know, everything has to go up. So, so have you been playing courtside after this and finding a hard, hard time adapting back and forth? Not, not necessarily. Uh, mostly what we do now is, is just beach tennis. Um, so we don't, you know, it's, 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 it's just more, more fun to, to, to be on the sand. Same kind of outfits or what, you can wear whatever you want? Nah, it's nah. like what you would wear at the beach. So okay. most of the guys on the tour will wear, you know, board shorts and no shirt. Girls are wearing... Really upgraded. Are they scored the same? Yeah, scoring is uh, very similar to regular tennis. It's uh -huh. an eight-game pro set, no ad scoring, and uh, you only get one serve, so you can't have uh, two serves like a regular tennis. And so tennis. When, when, our, when the viewers come, how, are there, is it doubles, is it singles? How do you play the game? It's all doubles. Um, there is no singles as of now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we got stands out there for people to come out and check it out. It's a great time. It's a lot of fun music. Uh, people going crazy, having a lot of fun. Now, everybody loves coming to Miami. I mean, is this one of the places you were very excited to be in to play? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I love coming down here. Love the atmosphere. Uh, crowd's great down here. So. so tell me about your boys other than the top, huh? These guys, I'll tell you what, probably the most dedicated beach tennis team that we have on tour. These guys really gave up a lot of... You know, uh -huh. they made a lot of personal sacrifices to devote themselves to beach tennis. And it's great because they just won a tournament two weeks ago and they're carrying a lot of momentum into our So you have a fan following coming here to Miami? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. A few, friend, <laughs> few friends. And so tell me, this is going to be taped on Saturday? Tell me all this about This is going to be that. taped for a national broadcast uh -huh. uh, on Saturday. We encourage the public to come down. We want as many people packed in there as possible. It's a whole lot of fun. It's an event like you've never seen before. And the public can participate in this event? Definitely. We're going to be having a lot of giveaways, a lot of cool stuff happening on Saturday. What kind of giveaways? Uh, we have some great equipment. We have uh, some surprises. I want to, you know, yeah. come down and check it out. We have some really great sponsors that have uh, taken care of us. Uh huh. And so, what should we wear when we come on down? Just our beach clothes? Absolutely. What do you think, yeah. guys? Yeah, it's like a day at the beach. beach. Girls in bathing suits and tennis rackets. We encourage Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds excellent. So you can come on down. It's on Ocean between Eighth and Ninth in South Beach. Um, and it is going to be pretty exciting. I've seen them kind of setting up and it looks really hot to me. And so coming up, we're going to go with local artist Craig Kusha and then we'll be taking a chow with Alta Katina. And just over time, you just start to make paintings. After you make a painting, another one sort of, another idea comes into your head and you just try to do that one and see and you just, there's really no way of going about it. I think you sort of have to just feel it out mostly to yourself and know what you're good at and whatnot. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm better painter when I don't make a lot of paintings. I think I'm better when I think about it and just to execute the painting and get correct pretty much the first few times. We 
started off the containers and then we went to Nada, which was like a smaller sort of fair that's in Basel. And then we actually, the last two years were in the, the big Basel fair. When you get to the containers, you're like, okay, this is a start. And I made a small painting and it was good. And it was nice just to get you know, a little exposure outside of where I was from, because I was still living in Ohio at that time. And, um, but you know, once Kevin got into the big fair, I've been, I was showing every year with him, so I think he just continued the trend because the response was really positive. And, and so I did some really big paintings for the big fair. And it was pretty, it's pretty crazy to be in there. And you're, you kind of feel like, wow, I finally got to somewhere that I was trying to get to. You got to a goal you were trying to get to. There's always pressure, especially in a market like this. But um, I think, you know, you sort of always, as an, I think most artists are always pressuring themselves. I mean, I think I'm harder on myself than anyone. I really, criticism really doesn't bother me because I pretty much, I really, I really pretty much criticize myself as much as you can and figure out all the ways I can criticize my own work to try to make it better. The way everything's put together, the way it's painted, the subject matter, how it's, how it's put together with each other, how the scale relates to that. I want people to look at it and go, hey, well, this has never really been done like this before. I feel like a lot of art nowadays, people think it's interesting, but they don't really connect to it. And I felt like, you know, if I could make work that was, that the goal was to like get an immediate reaction, I guess, from the viewer, and then hopefully that would be intriguing enough to them that they would want to keep looking at the work, wanting to search out what it's about, maybe, you know, have their own ideas and create their own stories within the work. You put everything of yourself into that piece, and it's kind of weird when, you work so hard and you know every little color is like exactly put there for a reason and you really struggle with to get it right and then sometimes they can people can look at it for like literally two seconds and walk on and you're kind of like great <laughs> you know hopefully i'm making the work in a way that it just doesn't end with that first first view